Okay, uh, final episode. Let's just do some speed tests just to show uh, this um, this thing working. Um, all right, now choose a nice big video frame size. Actually, I'll choose something a bit smaller. Uh, 1920 by 1080. Uh, 8 bit. Now, what I'm going to do first, I'm going to test the internal Mac drive. I'm going to use a half gigabyte file here, size, and I'm testing the Mac uh, drive, which is um, like would be the C drive, which the operating system is on. It's got a lot of space still free on it. So, here we go. Oh, I'm using this uh, AGA video system disk tester. It's not ideal, but uh, it'll give you an idea. Okay, so there you go. Um, you know, about 77 meg, 78 meg a second, megabytes a second you'll get from the internal disk of the Mac. Now we'll try another Mac internal disk. I've got a 320 gig SATA drive in another drive slot there. It's about a quarter full. Let's try that one. A little bit quicker, about 78, 77 meg, megabytes a second. Okay, um, now let's try the uh, the my book. So Western Dig my book, one terabyte. Um, it is about a quarter full, um, and it's wired up to the Mac Pro with FireWire 800. Let's try that one. As you can see, it's about half the rate of the internal SATA, roughly. A little bit more. Okay. And now let's try the G speed. Okay. You can see there's a pretty substantial jump there and how fast it's reading that half gigabyte and writing that half gigabyte. <coughs> so you're looking at almost a three times increase there. Okay, here we are at Logic Pro and I've got 255 tracks and each one's got a 2496 file on. Now, obviously, I didn't have time to create 255 or 256 um, completely different 2496 audio files. So what I did was I took a 2496 audio file and I made 255 copies. So those individual copies, which are each one is a unique file, it just happens to have the same contents, yeah? Uh, are loaded onto these 255 Logic tracks. So the GSPDS is delivering 255 unique uh, audio file tracks uh, through the system. Okay, so let's... Oh, the other thing is I sh I've got it set to the internal audio device, um, not the Apogee Duet, which is wired up to the system, just so the sound will come out of these speakers, right, uh, rather than having to wire up the monitoring so let's hit play. I'm at a bar 40. Okay, so hit play. It'll be a bit of a pause. Here we go. Put down the disc meter there. Okay, what I'm going to do is uh, slow the volume a bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to jump around the timeline. I'm going to jump forward to bar 90 something. Here we go. There'll be a pause. Just buffering and there we go. And I'll step back to bar 25. There'll be a pause for buffering. And we're off again. So you can see, you know, it's quite adequately coping with delivering 255 tracks of 2496. I'll tell you what I'll do, I'll just still wire up the Apogee 
and see if that makes any difference. It shouldn't, but it might make some difference in terms of the amount of buffering. I don't know. Hang on. Let me just pause the camera. I've got the duet wired up on its lowest 32 samples and um, a medium buffer. Let's try playing. You won't hear any sound. Still a pause and off we're off. But you can see down there. Um, I'll just move the camera down, the duet's playing. The file's there. So yeah, you know, that's you can see it's quite adequately coping with um delivering uh 255 tracks of 2496 audio. Okay, well, summing up um, and stop press, I've now got the new model, um, the new um, replacement unit. This is it, it's the same GSPDS, but it's a 3 terabyte model. Um, in the time that I had to get the other one replaced, G Technology had discontinued the 2 terabyte model, so I had to pay for, uh, some extra. To upgrade to three terabytes, but this is the replacement brand new unit. If you remember from this uh, earlier on in this uh, video review, in one of the other episodes, I've been saying how the model that was sent to me was a, a unit that had been uh, sent back faulty and repaired and then sent to me by mistake as new. This is a brand new unit, and the fan is definitely quieter. Definitely. What I'll do is I'll just show that in close up like I did with the first one, and then I can. Um, edit in a little tiny bit of footage of the first one and you can compare the two. It is substantially quieter. I'll just move the camera tripod. So I shall bring in the camera. And whilst it's still not silent, it's definitely quieter. A lot quieter. Um, remember the microphone is fitted to the top of this lens, so I'll just raise the unit up with my hands. Anyway, there it is. And most of that noise is coming from the, uh, from the cooling fan. It's now much quieter. And that changes quite a lot in terms of the summing up. Let's get the camera back on the tripod. So, in summing up, basically, if you need either, prof you know, if, uh, some type of professional storage solution, because this can be striped or, or mirrored or, or done in a variety of different RAID formats as, as we've discussed. For a pro studio that's doing very high track counts of uh, 2496 or, or 24192 audio, this will give you more tracks than you could possibly need. If you're doing video uh, synced with um, audio, some type of work like that, scoring, again it's a great solution to provide high quality video playback. Um, in terms of the quietness, now that I've got a fixed unit, once it's under the bench where it lives, it's it's adequately quiet. Um, you wouldn't want to do the most ultra pristine uh, recording with lots of silent space that requires the most perfectly quiet environment. But uh, even in a home studio scenario, when it's under the bench, um, it's it's pretty much not noticeable. It doesn't really make any much more noise than a than a pretty quiet PC. So uh, yeah, so I think it's a, it's a great little product and there isn't a lot of choice on the market if you don't go for this one. Um, you're looking at this or the Pro Avio edit box or something like that. Uh, the value isn't as good as it was now that the pound has done so many things. Uh, these used to be 700 quid for a 2 terabyte version. And uh, then, you know, even if the 2 terabyte version still existed, it jumped up to a thousand pound plus. So. Um, they are costly, but if you're looking for a pro solution, yeah, I mean, now that the quietness issue has been established, uh, you know, it's pretty pretty usable. And if it's under a workbench um, and away from your microphone a reasonable distance, you could even record in the same room as it, as long as it isn't ultra quiet type acoustic material. You know, if there's any type of background music, you won't notice that uh, that noise. So, yeah, there it is. I hope this has been useful to people.